Yeah, my, their statement uh, is in uh, there for you to read that I, uh, I prepared for it ahead of time. And uh, it starts off by uh, my uh, fantasizing that the, uh, the, the sign that greets you uh, when you come into Kittery, mm -hmm. at the exit, at entrance to Maine at Kittery, uh, which is Maine the way life should be, that is about to be changed by our governor to Maine polluters more than welcome. <laughs> and, uh, but I won't get into that. Just a little bit on my background. I, uh, before I was in the legislature, I worked for Governor Ken Curtis. And I was in the, there the days before we had many of these, uh, if not most of these, uh, protective laws uh, for, for the environment. And I know what happened in terms of development uh, uh, in that because Ken Curtis was very interested in development. That was his background. And we had a, every Sharpie in the United States coming up here with schemes uh, that they wanted to put out for how we would develop and have huge amounts of jobs. Of course, they wanted us to pay for it, uh, for most of us. And, and even the few that were sort of bona fide people uh, like for example, a man named Armand Hammer, who was the head of uh, Occidental Oil, uh, wanted to build an oil refinery up here. Well, the basic reason he wanted to do it was, at that time, there was a law uh, that you couldn't import oil into the United States unless you had a, a special uh, certificate or license. And he didn't have one. And this was an end around about that. So that, that thing never went anywhere. And then we had the famous uh, Fred Balsing, plan to uh, uh, start a whole new uh, agricultural operation for sugar beets up in Arista County. And he uh, did two things. He got the state to, to back his, uh, his loans. And he also got permission from the legislature to pollute a uh, river, or a small river up there. Um, that fell apart. The state was left holding a bag for uh, millions of dollars. And so that was the kind of thing that was going on before there was a consciousness of, uh, you know, that we needed laws to protect ourselves. So during the Curtis administration, we passed two major environmental laws. They got national <coughs> They were the first of their kind in the country. One was the site selection law, um, which up until that time, anybody could come in and build any, if they bought the land and owned the land, they could build whatever they want. There was no criteria, there were, there were no safeguards against uh, pollution and so forth. Um, and the other was the oil conveyance law, because most people don't realize that Portland is the second largest oil port on the East Coast. Uh, all of the oil that goes um, to Montreal in that part of Canada goes through the pipeline there. And so we put a tariff on that to make sure that we'd have enough money in case of an oil spill that they wouldn't be uh, left uh, just not being able to deal with it. So uh, apparently, uh, uh, under the page has uh, already discovered the first of those bills, the site selection uh, law, which is run by the uh, Bureau of uh, the Board of Environmental Protection. And he's gotten over that. He probably hasn't caught up with the second of those two laws. <laughs> What I basically do want to talk about, uh, or finish up today, is to get to the, the issue that we're here for, which is the question of the people's veto. And as a historian, uh, I want to tell you the story about the very first time the people's veto was used in Maine. And it was back in 1907, and it happened in my hometown, uh, town of York. And what happened there was we had a lot of summer people move in to the town. And, uh, and some of the, uh, from away, very rich people, <laughs> mansions in one area of the town. And what they wanted to do was have things that the people in the rest of the town, in that country, the farmers, uh, people working, living out there, um, couldn't afford. And so they would turn it down to town meeting. So what they did was they put a bill in the main 
legislature to split the town of York and have their own town in the area where they live, uh, which to be called Gorgiana, named after Sir Ferdinand of Gorges, who originally was the grand king of that land and the king of England. And, um, and so they, uh, they, put, they put the bill in, and what, if it had passed, what would have happened was most of the valuable land um, that could be taxed would be uh, in one in their town, and then the rest of the people would have all the roads and everything to take care of with very little valuation. Um, and so the bill uh, was put in actually by the son of one of these people who was a rep from Portland, and uh, was making its way through the legislature. Uh, in order to try and stop it, uh, the town elected, I think, the first Democrat in their history. Now, I thought I was always the first Democrat in their history. Uh, but it turned out that this guy, and I had thought that he had threatened to run as a Democrat. It turned out when I did some research, he was really was a Democrat. His name was Josiah Chase. And uh, he fought tooth and nail within the legislature to, to kill that bill. And he thought he almost had it killed. And then some strange things started happening. And from, uh, I don't know how many of you remember Louis Jalbert um, yeah. and the legislature. Yeah. Oh, Louis was, uh, the, <laughs> he was the, the veteran there. He, he, he had heard stories about how money was passed around uh, from these fat cats down in, uh, in New York. And, and by the by gosh, the law um, got passed. They passed both bodies and the governor signed it. But prior to that, the, uh, the legislation that had created the people's veto had been passed. So this was the first instance where people's veto was used. And Josiah Chase and, and the other people that wanted to keep the, the town of York together um, went out and they got signatures all over the state of Maine. Uh, some of them were thrown out like the ones that they got at the state prison. But <laughs> uh, but in any event, they got their signatures, they went before the people, and by about a three to one margin, the people kept the town of York intact. And that's why I'm here today, because our job is going to be to keep the state of Maine intact. Mm -hmm.